In this video, I'll show you how to convert color photos into great looking black and whites. I'm using Affinity Photo 2.2.1. Although editing black and white is in some ways simpler than editing color, it can be quite challenging. It's often difficult to create the right tones and textures, and getting contrast just right can also be a challenge. I'll guide you through the process. Here's the photo I'll be using. I'll start off with a black and white adjustment. The photo is now black and white, but it's flat, lacking depth and contrast, so there's still much to be done. Notice the black and white adjustment dialog has several color sliders. These use the color information in the underlying image layer. Moving a slider to the right brightens its associated tone, and moving it to the left darkens it. I'll use them to adjust the lightness and darkness of the different tones in the image, adding depth, texture, and contrast. I'll start with the red slider, Depending on the image, some of these sliders may have no effect. A good way to test if they do is to move them back and forth. If I do that with the red slider, you can see that it does indeed have an effect. That means there are plenty of red tones in the underlying image. I'll double click its handle to reset it to its default position. Moving it to the left darkens the shadows, especially in the leaves of the tree. I like the way that looks, so I'll leave it there. I'll try the yellow slider. It definitely has an effect. Moving it to the right brings out the leaves in the tree and brightens up the field, which I think looks good. Now for green. I could brighten the field by moving it to the right, but I think that takes away too much of the texture. Moving it to the left, but not too much, looks better. See how it brings out the contours of the field and helps the fallen leaves stand out? Moving the cyan slider, I can see that it has an effect, mostly on the cage around the baseball diamond. I'll just brighten it a little. Blue has about the same effect as cyan. I'll leave it at its default position. The magenta slider has little, if any, effect. I'll close that off. Next, I'll add a curves adjustment. It's great for adding contrast and texture, allowing easy adjustment of highlights, midtones, and shadows. The right side of the graph represents highlights, the middle midtones, and the left shadows. I'll make very slight adjustments. I'll pull down the shadows just a tad. The contours of the field are slightly more defined and the fallen leaves are standing out more. I'll try bringing up the highlights a little. Next I'll try the mid-tones. Bringing them down just a tiny bit works really well, adding more texture to the field. I'll turn the curves adjustment off and on so you can see the effect. Subtle, but definitely more depth, contrast, and texture. For this image, I think a subtle approach is best. Of course, with other images, a more extreme approach may work better. As always, it all depends on the photo, what you're trying to do, and personal taste. Now I'll add a levels adjustment to further refine brightness and contrast. The left side of the histogram indicates I can increase the black level a bit without blowing out any shadows. I'll hold down the Option key, Alt key in Windows, and move the black level slider to the right. At about 6%, the shadows are beginning to become pure black. I'll release the mouse and play a by eye. Blown out shadows or highlights are not always a bad thing. I 
right about 2% looks good. The histogram also indicates some blown out highlights. The spot of white up against the right side tells me that, but I'll try moving the white slider to the left and see what it looks like. About 95% for that looks good. Next I'll use the gamma slider to adjust the brightness of the midtones. Just the tiniest bit to the right works well. I'll turn the levels adjustment off and on. Subtle again, but it's made a difference. There's more depth and clarity. These three adjustments, black and white, curves and levels, used in combination give very fine grain control over brightness and contrast, which is basically what black and white boils down to. As a finishing touch, I'll add some sharpening to the subject. I'll do that by adding a high pass live filter. I'll set the radius to one pixel. And I'll change the blend mode to overlay. I only want to sharpen the subject, so I'll apply an empty mask to the high pass live filter layer to make the sharpening invisible. I'll make sure the high pass filter layer is selected and select new empty mask layer from the layer menu. I'll use a white brush to paint in the sharpening on the subject only. Always make sure the mask layer is selected before you begin painting. I'll paint on the baseball cage in the shadow as well. Okay, I'll call that done. Here's the photo when I first added the black and white adjustment, but before changing anything. And here's the finished photo. The former is flat and dull, lacking texture and detail. It almost looks two-dimensional. The finished photo, on the other hand, has much more detail, especially in the field. You can see its contours. And the photo has depth. It's three-dimensional. The fallen leaves in the foreground are well-defined. And the tree trunk has nice contrast, which really adds to the composition. And the bright leaves in the tree stand out from the shadows. So much better, in my opinion. And that's a basic guide to converting color photos into black and whites. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching.